now we're good to go. TLDR, dark comedy is one thing, but don't say slurs, and maybe creating an SMP where people feel comfortable doing that under the guise of dark or offensive comedy isn't the best idea. I think it's important to be able to be critical of creators that we enjoy, and in turn for those creators to listen to genuine criticism without blowing it off as cancel culture. Alright, with that out of the way, let me introduce myself. My name is Deli. I use they and them pronouns, and if you use them in my comment section, I will respect you infinitely more. I'm the spotted owl or that spotted owl on most social media platforms, um, and I'm a really big fan of McNasty and the Goons. Um, I've known of them for a few years now and watched them pretty religiously through 2020. I hyperfixated on them pretty hard, and that carried me through most of the pandemic. Now. I recognize that I'm probably different than most of the Goons' fans, given that I'm not a straight guy, um, but I'd really appreciate it if you listen to my perspective on this, because I feel that it's important that you know why I feel the way I do um, about the Dark SMP. I recognize that there's probably a lot of bias in this based on my life experiences, um, but there are in everybody's comments um, based on their own life experiences, and I would appreciate it if you don't discount my opinion because of that, um, because I am speaking the truth from my life, and I think it's important that that as a perspective is shared as well. I've also never made a video that's not a compilation before, so please excuse any editing errors because I'm learning how to do it so that I can post this, um, but I did feel that it was important for me to explain my stance on this in a way that wasn't through Twitter or otherwise restrained by a character limit. Obviously, it's very professional with my script on my phone and my bed as my chair and recording without a webcam or mic, um, but I do feel that I have something to add to the conversation. I hoped people would listen, regardless. I want to preface this by saying that I am by no means trying to cancel anyone in the SMP. Um, there is some legitimate criticism embedded in this, and I would appreciate if anyone involved heard this and genuinely listened to it. But in no way is this intended to defame or de-platform anyone, and it shouldn't be taken as such. I also want to say that for the most part, I am thrilled about this SMP. It really does combine some of my absolute favorite content creators, and I'm delighted that many of them are going to have more interactions. This is an opportunity for them to interact more, and I'm grateful for any content that's produced from it. Like, this is something I'm legitimately excited for. While this video in particular is meant for the critical parts, um, I do want it to be known that I'm excited for this alongside many of you, um, but I feel that it is important to bring some of these things up before the SMP launches. I'm going to outline my points vaguely from what I think is the most minor criticism to the most important, um, and I would ask you to wait till the end and hear all of my points if you are going to comment, because obviously the most important one is towards the end. Um, I start with some kind of trivial things, um, so I'd appreciate if you wait a little bit. Firstly, I want to touch on how the writers are going to handle the lore aspect of the SMP. Obviously, everyone knows about the Dream SMP and how heavily lore-based the roleplay is, as it's gone through several wars and revolutions in its history, they've developed the role of the three canon lives, and explored the role of the stream itself, such as one streamer, Tebo, um, ending his stream entirely and going dark when he thought one of his friends had killed himself in canon. What is this? What is this? Pillar! Why is it all blown up? What did he- No. Surely not. It was a big moment for how streamers used the stream itself as a tool for roleplay similar to Technoblade and the chat being the voices in his head developing as a part of the character itself, instead of just part of the stream. We've also very recently witnessed the launch of Epic SMP, which also unveils itself with lore-based parts on the streams of people like Ted Nivisen. One of the things I'm just unclear on more so than critical of is whether, based on the views of some of the creators involved in the Dark SMP on Dream fans, 
whether they actually understand why people enjoy tuning in to lore-based streams or invest so heavily in the characters involved. It's a form of escapism for them, and not only as a way for streamers to interact, not only waiting for your favorite streamers to meet each other in the environment of the SMP, but also as a story they're willing to emotionally invest in. Now, I don't know a damn thing about Dark SMP or how they're planning to handle this, whether the SMP will really just be a multiplayer world meant to bring together creators of similar content, or whether they're going to genuinely invest in roleplay and lore, but the reveal of lore on the Epic SMP was unexpected to me personally, and also makes me think that the Dark SMP will attempt something similar, following in the footsteps of both of the well-known SMPs, especially with the involvement of people like Jay Schlott, who know enough about the Dream SMP after being a main player in it to invest in some of the lore. My concern with this stems from the fact that if they do, I'm not sure whether either the creators involved or the viewers of the Dark SMP will be prepared. The creators, because many of them have no experience with actual acting, voice acting, or even extended roleplay, and the audience, because I'm not sure the regular audience of the streamers involved will be emotionally invested in scripted lore the same way that the Dream fans are able to, and also because a scripted SMP may bring in a new audience that the creators are not expecting. More queer people, more kids, and more people of color, regardless of any warnings they broadcast. Of course, this point is pure speculation, and so of course is my least concern, but it was something I want to bring up. My second point is about putting creators together who won't call out peers on bad comedy. Ace's video commented that putting together creators of different comedy styles for the epic SMP meant that some people would feel like they had to tone it down for streams, quote unquote. When you get together a bunch of people that have different backgrounds of content and varying levels of edginess, it feels as though they must be on their best behavior, lest they feel the cold hand of YouTube, or Twitch even, give them that big ol' smack. As long as the comedy still works together and produces good content for streams, I don't see a problem with having creators together who will hold each other to higher standards and hold each other accountable on distasteful jokes. On the other hand, I'm extremely concerned by combining so many creators of the same comedy style who have worked together before and who have histories of saying slurs. The Misfits issues with racial slurs, like the availability on YouTube of compilation videos called Misfits saying slurs for 10 minutes. <laughs> You're making it really tough for the shoutcasters. Nay, gas. <laughs> <laughs> What's Look up? Here. It's me, hey, man. local up, man? faggot. You're no, not streaming, are you? Don't worry. Yeah, he's streaming, by the way. Wait, could we get away with uh, where uh, where we we both split up a word? Oh uh, <laughs> yeah. Do, do Me. No, nah, nah, I wouldn't. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. I'd advise against that. <laughs> okay, just figured. I, just figured. I'd try. Sorry. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Good. Oh, wow. oh no. My knee. I would never say it. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Get chill. What the fuck? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> All right. Nigga. Please. Yeah, you gotta chill and stop being racist, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, please. Oh my God. <laughs> Versus the goon's own problem with such a history. such as McNasty's joking comment comparing black people to monkeys that Jay, a black man, openly said he was uncomfortable with. <laughs> I was born in the year of the cock. I was born in the year of the monkey, so I should be able to say the N-word, right? Oh my god! <laughs> you cannot wow. say these things! Wow. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus! The Chinese can hand out the N-word pass? <laughs> McNasty, <laughs> as a certified black, that was a no-go, dog. Okay. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck? Oh my god. As somebody who is not a certified black, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> Yo, I feel like if I include that shit with your career is gone. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Or Blarg's video from two days ago. 
which referenced the R slur multiple times throughout, just in casual conversation. Fetch me the finest vegan in the village. Oh wait, they don't <laughs> exist. You are not retarded. <laughs> yeah, that strain of retard hadn't been bred yet, fortunately. Our society isn't bored enough to come up with retarded shit. <laughs> 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 God damn, these guys are fucking retarded. <laughs> and the open admission that viewer discretion is advised makes me concerned that anything said on the dark SMP will be excused as dark humor, and any criticism will just be not being able to take a joke, even when it's racism, sexism, bigotry, etc. I'm not asking for apologies for histories, I'm just hoping that these people have changed enough to hold each other accountable immediately when another crosses the line, and my concern stems from the fact that so far none of them have demonstrated that they have. And my last point is expanding on the last topic. I'm worried about creators blowing off genuine criticism as cancel culture and Twitter coming for them, while disregarding any actual help people are trying to give them. Now, maybe McNasty is just seeing a different side of Twitter than I am which is very possible and I'm not discounting that. But I didn't see anyone actually trying to cancel Fitz. I'm concerned that all the creators saw a few days ago was that there were 25,000 tweets mentioning Fitz and interpreted that as canceling when all I saw were tweets like, man, I can't believe he would say that. It hurts people. I don't think it should really have to be said not to say slurs, but apparently it does. Fitz's drama became quote-unquote Twitter drama because that's where it reached people who are not straight white men. The special snowflakes these creators like to joke about are not just straight guys in his audience who didn't like a no-no word they said. They're people who can be and have been hurt by these words. The reason people were talking about it is because, thanks to the connections and the hype surrounding the Arabic SMP, Fitz's language finally reached someone outside the audience he's been cultivating as an offensive brand. He's not cancelable, because he's already created an audience that's okay with this. When people said, oh, you just don't know Fitz, he's been doing this for years, the people weren't trying to cancel him because they did know that. He's created an audience who is aware of this, who is aware of his history with slurs, who is aware of his history with racial issues, who don't care anymore. And he's cultivated that for himself. Also, just a note for me a few hours later, to amend that statement, I saw a lot of people saying, we're not surprised, but it's still shitty. Like, we know Fitz is known for offensive content. He's still on a server with people of higher standards for comedy and other neurodivergent creators, and it's still a shitty thing for him to do. He's a content creator, he has to be held to high standards, and he's not being had that right now. It not being surprising and still a shitty thing to do are two things that are coexisting here. So. That's all. He's created that for himself by already offending all the people who could be hurt by that. I can't watch his content because I don't like how easily he jokes about the F slur. That's something I can be and have been hurt by. So I don't watch him. Everyone like me, who can be hurt by slurs, does not watch. He's already created an audience for himself where he is uncancelable because he chooses the worst words to say, and his audience knows that. Hello, me again. Uh, I do want to say as well, if for this particular instance, I'm not including Toby, because she's someone who can reclaim the F slur. I'm not particularly comfortable with doing that for myself as a queer person, but that's a slur that she can reclaim. I'm not excusing her use of other slurs, and I'm not excusing the other misfits use of the F slur. But she can reclaim the F slur, and I'm not going to hold that one against her. I was even more shocked at things like Swagger's tweet and response, and it really highlighted what I'm concerned about. That instead of reading the genuine criticism in people's outrage, which is that you can have dark humor without saying slurs, they dug their heels into their bigoted acts and decided to hold the line there. Now, I don't genuinely believe that any of the misfits, nor anyone involved in the Dark SMP, are bigots or racists or anything like that, but I am concerned by the way they react in instances like this and cling to their bigoted acts, and I'm scared for how they're going to use this SMP as such, especially when, 
as I said earlier, they're involved with other creators who won't call them out for it. This should also go without saying, but there is a difference between dark humor and actual slurs. I don't doubt that a lot of the SMP will be the goons running around yelling in shitty Indian accents, and I'm excited for that just like many of you, but I do think it's important to be critical of creators you enjoy and try to help them grow. As such, I would like this to be more cautionary to the dark SMP. There is something to be said for the fact that the catalyst to the SMP announcement video was debate over someone saying a slur, someone who is now involved in that very SMP. I'm concerned for how the SMP will develop primarily because of that fact. Like I've said, this is not a cancellation video, especially when the SMP hasn't even launched yet, but I would urge all the creators involved to consider how they are going to act when live. While the correct response to some things may be just don't watch, I don't believe that rhetoric applies to slurs. When someone says, hey, this word has historically been used to mock, hurt, and abuse people like me, the response should not be, don't watch it then. People who ask you not to use slurs are not saying, use it where I can't hear it. They're saying, don't use it anywhere. Using it elsewhere only cultivates a population who is willing to use it, and as previously mentioned, many people in this SMP already have the fan base who are willing to do things like use slurs. People's outrage about slurs did not mean, do it somewhere else. I'm crippled. I use a cane to walk and sometimes a wheelchair to get around. I'm also openly queer. I've been told many, many shitty things and called some awful things to my face. In some regards, it's given me a thicker skin. I can laugh about humor about wheelchair users because that's the same kind of humor that I use to cope in my day-to-day -day life. But when I ask people not to use certain discriminatory language, that doesn't mean it's okay to use it behind my back. I don't want you to take it elsewhere or use it behind closed doors with someone else. I just want you to try and avoid the language that can be extraordinarily damaging to people. McNasty, as a content creator, has the power to create people who are accustomed to using slurs and will be more willing to take those outside of the YouTube sphere of influence and say them to people's faces. And as someone who has been and can be hurt by them, isolating comedy that involves slurs is not at all what I want. By creating this closed off space to use dark humor, I'm really worried about what kind of environment he's fostering by teaching people that it's fine to use slurs as long as it's behind closed doors. That's my biggest concern. I want you to realize how many people unlike you may be watching your content. I hope to God you know better than to use some of these words, but with how you've dug your heels in on Twitter and the jokes you've made in the past, without demonstrating you've changed, I can't really be sure. I would encourage you to consider why it's actually important to you to defend your right to continue using those words, because I don't actually think it should be that important to you. Slurs don't actually add anything to your comedy. I don't know if the white gamer boys know this, but it's not actually funnier when you say retarded and it just means bad. It doesn't make whatever you're saying funnier, and they have a history of being used to hurt. I just don't think, regardless of how the rest of your comedy has developed over your time on YouTube, that slurs are an important part of it. As such, I think it should have been easy to stop the second you saw any criticism about it. Because there's a big difference between making jokes about Blarg flying a plane into a building. Oh, I love going into Tilted Towers. Look at this shit already. Remember my name. Don't worry, dude. I'll have my homie Ahmed fly into half of these. We'll take him out. Oh, <laughs> 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 or using shitty Indian accents and making jokes about telemarketing. Griffin, what is on Tara's favorite drinky? <laughs> you got a bomb. <laughs> you get it? Because I said the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> or talking about whether you would fuck Puffer on the podcast. I feel like we're just talking about Puffer right now. <laughs> I, I would use I Puffer as a flashlight. I would use Big Puffer as a flashlight. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I'll put that on the books than there is between using slurs to denote those things. So to sum up, my criticism is this. Consider how a lore-based SMP will draw in a wider range of people than the creators involved expect, and please consider your defense of dark humor and uncancelable creators as you go forward with this. The creators you involved are uncancelable, but it's not for the right reasons. This is a weird recording setup I have going. But I didn't mean that they're uncancelable because they're good people or they haven't done anything wrong. I meant that they're uncancelable because they've already created the audience that doesn't care. They've already 
developed this audience of only the straight white gamer boys by just weeding out everyone who didn't want to listen to them say slurs or got fed up with the offensive language. And if that works for them, okay. But if they keep insisting and digging their heels in on using slurs, they're just, they're not going to be able to grow past that. That's the audience that they've got, I guess. I would also ask that you try to see the genuine criticism in what you dubbed Fitz's drama. There is a legitimate reason people were upset about Fitz using a slur. It extends far past just Twitter drama. And I would ask you to remember that as you move forward. As I have reiterated, I'm not trying to cancel anyone involved, and I'm not asking anything from them except to consider the points made as I go forward with the creation of the SMP. Thank you for watching if you've made it this far. I have a feeling that if you've watched to this point, you have an opinion on what I've said. I would encourage you to comment, and I will be responding to some. However, if your defense includes that any of these words are quote-unquote just a word, I will delete your comment without consideration for what the rest of the comment says. I have no interest in your bigoted opinions here. I would be happy to calmly discuss other points of view in the comment section. As I said before, I am a queer, crippled, veterinary student, so I probably have some very different opinions from many other goons viewers, and I'm more than happy to hear yours as long as you're respectful. If you're not, I will find you and make you as crippled as I am. Cheers. My friending, we do it.